Hi, welcome to this sample lesson, um, a sample mini lesson that I might do for writing and grammar instruction in one of my classes. I'm going to show you what a 15 minute lesson might look like before then students would have time to work independently, during which I would be able to check in with individual students through video chat to find out how they're doing, what they understand, uh, what questions they have. So today's lesson is going to be on active versus passive voice and how you identify what's active and what's passive, how to switch from passive to active, and the times in which passive voice is okay to use. I'm going to show you an example of software that I use that to help engage with students. There is an add-on uh, called Pear Deck in which I'm able to make slideshows that are interactive that students can click on and interact with as I'm giving the presentation. So they can, when they log into Microsoft Teams, I can have these presentations automatically uploaded into the class channel. They can open it up and it becomes an interactive experience. So I would start the lesson with some pre-questions to find out what they already know. And they are able to uh, respond to the questions as I ask them in real time. So I would read, the sen read this. This sentence is passive. My little brother stole the last state fair cream puff. And on their end, they can click true or false, depending on what they think the answer is. And on my end, I get instantaneous feedback on what the students understand or don't understand. Uh, with this sentence. And so I can see how many say true, how many say false. I can share my screen and show them what the class responded. They won't know what individual girls responded, but they will be able to see as a class, as a whole, what percentage said true, what percentage said false. And so we can kind of get an idea of where we all are in our understanding on active or passive voice. I would go through three questions um, with different examples of sentences that might be passive or active. They would select true or false for each of them. For each one, I would give the answer and talk briefly about it, not too in depth yet because that is what the lesson will be for. This is just kind of a preview for them and a chance for me to find out how much they know by having them interact with this PowerPoint. Once we have gone through those three questions and I've kind of given them a preview of it, we would then go into the note-taking part of the lesson. And for the note-taking, they can uh, do traditional pen and paper, write down notes as I am talking. They can take notes on a Word doc on their computer. They could actually even download this presentation because I make uh, PDF versions of every presentation I create and I put it on my DSHA. So they can download the PDF and they can type, questions, type notes in the PDF. They can highlight things in there as I am talking. So it's very individualized. Whatever note taking process is best for them, they are able to do. So I would instruct them to annotate and take some notes and write down questions they have while I'm going through this. So what is active versus passive voice? In simple terms, a sentence in active voice includes a subject performing an action, while a, se a sentence in passive voice includes a subject receiving an action. So an example of this would be, Terrence prepared our meal tonight. That is an active sentence because Terrence is a subject, he actively prepared the meal. The way of writing that in passive voice would be, our dinner tonight was prepared by Terrence. In this case, I've made the dinner the subject, and the dinner is not doing anything. It's being prepared. It's receiving the action from the actor. And so this is written in a more passive tone. So I would pause here and ask then if there are any starting questions just with the difference between active and passive. Um, students can type questions in the chat or they can ask questions out loud because everyone will be in the video call on the video and they can unmute themselves and ask their question. 
So I would just make sure that everyone so far understands where, what I'm saying. I would go on to then talk about, is passive voice always wrong? Because that's a question I get a lot from students when I'm editing their papers. And no, it's not always wrong. Uh, with writing, there are very few hard and fast rules. In fact, that's why a lot of people don't like English class, because it sometimes isn't objective. It sometimes isn't, well, this is right, that is wrong. Uh, because it's an, writing is an art form. So rather than hard and fast rules, we have guidelines. And in this case, uh, the most commonly accepted guideline is that you should predominantly use active voice. If most of your sentences are active, then it's okay to have a few well-placed, uh, intentionally used passive sentences. And in order to do that, you really need to be able to identify the difference between active and passive. And and understand why some sentences are considered active and why some are passive. When looking at active sentences or active voice, it establishes a strong, clear tone. Um, it is more concise. Active sentences use fewer words to get the same point across. Uh, and they focus on the subject rather than the action. Um, so they sound, it, the verbs, come off the paper, come alive more. There, it's more active. Whereas passive voice, it sounds weak, it's vague, it's not as clear, not as strong. It uses more words than are necessary, uh, which when you're working towards that word count, you sometimes want more words, but it's not quality writing in that case, because you want quality versus quantity. Um, if you're spending 10 words to say what you could say, in five, it's going to sound weaker than if you are more concise. And lastly, passive voice focuses on the action rather than the subject. And that is okay sometimes, which is going to segue into my next point after this. There are times in which you want to focus on the action rather than the subject. But it, as you can see, looking at the difference between active and passive, Active voice is more valuable in your writer's toolkit, toolkit than passive voice. As long as you know when it's okay to use passive voice. And there are some cases where you might want to use it. Uh, if the subject is not your intended focus of the sentence and you want to focus on the object or the action, then passive sentences work better. Because to actively say it, you would say, the fire burned the house. That is active, the fire is the subject, it's the actor, it's what's doing the action. However, in this case, I'm probably more focused not on the fire, but what happened because of the fire. So I would actually want to write this sentence passively. The house was burned in the fire. Because that's my focus. Like, I care about the house being burned down. That's what I'm intending to put my focus on. Not the fire, but what happened because of the fire. So in this case, passive voice probably is more effective. Sometimes you might want to be tactful and avoid naming the person who performed the action. Uh, for example, I might say, the packages were mixed up in the mail room. Because what's important, the information that needs to be presented is that the packages were mixed up. The person who mixed them up, maybe we don't want to name them. Maybe they were an intern and you don't want them to get in trouble. Uh, maybe it doesn't really matter who mixed them up. What matters is that they were mixed up and now you need to fix it. So in this case, passive voice might work better for the point you're trying to get across. Similarly, similarly sometimes you don't know who the actor is. You don't know who did the action. And so you would say, the rabbit was stolen. I don't know who stole my rabbit. He's just gone. And that's what I'm trying to convey in my sentence. So in this case, passive is fine. Uh, also, you could say, um, or in some cases, the subject might not matter. Uh, that's not what you're trying to focus on. So like, I am being picked up by somebody. I, the fact that I am being picked up is the most important part of the sentence. Maybe I'm waiting outside school and someone offers me a ride home. And I say, oh no, thank you, I'm being picked up by somebody. 
I am able to convey the most important information through this passive construction. It doesn't matter if I write it in active. Passive is perfectly fine. With all these examples, again, keeping in mind that in these cases, we write in passive voice because the rest of the sentences we can assume were written in active voice. As long as you predominantly write in active, it is perfectly fine to use some well-placed, well-used passive sentences. So here I would pause again uh, to get questions from the students. Again, either through the chat window or if they want to unmute and ask questions. Before we go on to the next part of the lesson that I'll be assessing, I want to make sure they understood the content I provided. Now, of course, if a, a girl has a question before this, she's always able to ask her questions. Um, I just am going to be also more intentional on stopping more often to check in with the class uh, because it might not be as clear to me if they get it or not. I'll have to intentionally stop more often to check in with their understanding. So once I'm sure that we are all understanding how to tell the difference between passive and active and understanding when passive voice is okay, I would then move on to converting from passive to active voice. This is what they'll be practicing. This is what I'll be assessing. So how do you convert from passive to active voice? First, you look for the by phrase. If the subject is buried by, by the by phrase, you can remove the by and put the subject in the front of the sentence, and that will make it active. So the ball was excellently thrown by the pitcher it is passive. If I get rid of the by and I put the pitcher at the beginning, it becomes the pitcher expertly threw the ball. Now my subject is actively engaged in the sentence. Sometimes your subject might be anonymous. You might not know who it is. Uh, so you can create a subject, a general term that will fit in a subject role. So for example, I, it was determined that 65% of Americans are homeowners. That is a passive sentence if I want to make it an active sentence, though, I have to come up with a subject. So I could say researchers determined that 65% of Americans are homeowners. Now I've made the sentence passive to active by creating that subject. So in order that now I would like to go on and practice this. Um, now that we've talked about how do you go from passive to active. I have four practice sentences the students will be able to engage with. So again, going back to the pair deck technology, on the student end, they see the same screen, but on the bottom, there is a toolbar with an icon of a T where you can create a text box. So what I would say to the students is that please turn these sentences from passive to active. And there's four sentences here. They're all passive. They can create a text box. Uh, in the quadrants and they can type up the sentences how they would edit them and then in real time on my end I go to my teacher dashboard and I can flip through my different student screens and I can see them typing as they type it so I get instantaneous feedback on whether or not students are engaged whether or not they're doing the activity and whether or not they understand the activity and then I'm also able to share my screen with the girls so they can see what their classmates have written. And it's anonymous, um, so nobody knows who wrote what, but I'm able to share with the girls what their classmates wrote, and we can talk about the different ways you're able to fix the sentences. Uh, because of course, there is not just one way to fix each sentence, and so this uh, gives us the opportunity to talk about different ways you could convert from passive to active, uh, and again, it's a great formative assessment tool for me to see immediately where is their understanding after going through this lesson. So once the girls have had time to work on these sentences and we've talked about them and shared some responses, I would give another practice activity, maybe on passive to active voice, maybe it's an activity from a previous class that I want to touch base with, uh, and they could either be working independently or in groups, and then during this time, I'm checking in one-on-one -on -one with the girls to find out where they are. This might be a situation where they do some group work as well, 
uh, they I would put them in groups and they can create uh, video chats in the classroom they can make their own their own chats in the classroom channel and they can work together on questions for an activity that I give them and then I can dip in and out of the different videos it's a great way to keep the class engaged because on our hybrid schedule you know let's say it's Monday half the girls are at home, half the girls are in the classroom, I would create groups where each group would have four girls, two, two who are in the classroom, two who are at home. They're all talking to each other in their video channel that I've created. And so if I've got five groups going at once, talking at the same time in their own individual group chats, as the instructor, I can actually flit in and out of the different groups and interact with each group, answer questions, listen on what they're saying, and just check to make sure that everyone understands what's going on. So I can stay engaged with the girls and they can stay engaged with each other uh, during this time. And then we'd end class, probably a reading assignment, some homework assignment, and then we would see each other the next day. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the lesson, uh, that hopefully this was a good opportunity to show some of the possibilities that we have in our classrooms with what we can do uh, with these lessons, keeping girls engaged um, throughout the fall semester. So thank you very much for um, joining me today.